In this video, I thought we'd go back to basics and talk about getting started. If you're a new user of Game Guru Max and you just haven't really had any experience with it, don't know where to begin, this is where you'd want to begin. This video right here. It may not be for everybody that's viewing my content right now, but I realized that I hadn't yet done something like this before, and I thought it'd be a good idea to go back to basics. So let's get started with the Game Guru Max Hub. This hub has a number of tabs, and as you can see, I'm on the demo tab uh, right now, and there's a number of little demo games that are included in Max. And these are meant to just give you an idea of what could be created with the program already. Um, now, as time goes on and as Max develops and gets more features and more capabilities, we'll probably see these either get expanded or replaced to show off some of the other capabilities available. So in other words, right now, if you look at a lot of these, most of them are, are geared towards kind of first person shooters. And those are obviously something that Max is fully capable of doing, but you could also make, you know, very elaborate puzzle games. You could make, uh, you know, just a, a huge number of RPGs. You could make combinations of these things. The sky is pretty well the limit uh, in terms of genre. Naturally, there are going to be some features that are either uh, not planned anytime soon or planned, but may not be out, you know, as of the making of this video. So stay tuned for those. But the point of these demo games is to allow you to play them experience them and then you'll also notice that there's a button here edit game now if i were to click the button edit game it would launch this demo project in a read-only version and the reason for that is we don't want people to take a demo game that was intended for learning turn around and export it out to you know a standalone version and try to sell it on steam that's really not a good practice that's something that we'd like to see people do but if you want to learn from them that's exactly what they're for let's suppose you play a game and you see something happen in the game and you realize hey i would love to have that in my game too but i'm not sure how to do that this is your opportunity to go and examine how that is done and and kind of recreate that feature uh, one really good example i found was a snowy mountain stroll I was really impressed with the um, the the way the game world was constructed. I don't, I'm not sure who uh, did that particular one. Maybe it'll say here. Let's see. Probably if I opened it up, it would tell me who created it. But uh, whoever did did a good job. They did a really good job with the world building, and I think you know the lighting and some of the other things that they did in there was really quite good. So I would encourage you to definitely take a look at that one. Uh, next, we have our My Games tab. This is going to be where you spend most of your time. Each one of these squares represents a project. Now, I've got a number of projects going on for various reasons, but you can see that I've got a testing project, and I would encourage you to start there. So by creating a, a project and just calling it testing or something to, to that effect, that's going to be your sandbox. That's going to be a place for you to go in and just mess around and do some concept, you know, trial and error, um, rather than trying to do that in a project that you're really taking seriously and trying to develop because what will happen inevitably is, you know, you'll either uh, maybe mess up something that you didn't intend to or you'll try something and it works but then um forget a, about some other portion of it you know there's you want to isolate your testing is all i'm really trying to say so i would recommend doing something like that we'll get into the storyboard and, and all that later as you open up projects and, and dig down deeper but for now let's stick to the hub and we'll go to the tutorial screen next now these tutorials aren't very in depth. They're going to give you a really high level overview of just some of the features in Max. When I first started, this is where I started. I went through and watched each one of these. They're very short. They're very high level. Uh, they don't really give you a whole lot of in-depth detail. And a lot of them aren't even necessarily up to date. <laughs> so 
you know, take them for what they are. They're just, uh, they're meant to get you a quick start, but they're not really all encompassing. Then there's the user guide. So if you click on the user guide tab, you, you see there's this button here that'll launch the user guide in a PDF. Now I actually wrote the majority of this guide. It's 230 some on pages, roughly. It's going to grow over time, obviously, as features are uh, added. I'll try to keep it up to date. You know, it's difficult to, to keep it up to date minute by minute or day by day or week by week, but, um, I usually visit, revisit it maybe twice a year, uh, once or twice a year and, and update it. So it's going to be most of the information that you need. 230 some odd pages is a lot of information and, uh, you don't necessarily need to read it cover to cover to get started. In fact, what I would recommend doing, and I've recommended this in the past is open it up and just skim, skim through it at first and kind of get a sense for the kinds of information and the levels of information that are available to you without necessarily reading it cover to cover. Um, that'll give you at least a reference point to know what's in there. And if you come across a point where you're not sure, you can reference back to it and you'll know, you know, what the, what the user guide is going to provide and what it's not. And next we have our live streams and social section. So this has a, a lot of different buttons here. Some of them are going to be more useful than others. In my opinion, you've got the official forums, which are a little stale. I think not a lot of us really use them. Some of the old school guys, you know, kind of stick to them and, and live by them, but you'll find that there's not a lot of activity there. There is some really good information, but take it with a grain of salt because as time goes on, and max gets developed. Some of that stuff also might get outdated and it's not like somebody's coming back behind it and cleaning it up. So especially things like scripts, you want to stick to the scripts that are included in max rather than trying to download stuff that you find there. Uh, yeah, Facebook, if you're a fan of Facebook, great. Knock yourself out. I'm not a fan of Facebook. I don't think I need to explain Facebook to anybody. So suffice it to say that's the Facebook for game career max or really for TGC, which is the game creators, the, developers of the software. Uh, this is probably where you're going to find the most value discord. If you uh, haven't used discord before, it's just a chatting program, but it's got uh, a lot of great features. It's got a pretty uh, sizable community going. You can go in there and ask questions and get uh, usually some pretty quick responses and some pretty detailed responses. A lot of, a lot of us hang out in there and uh, try to help each other out where we can. Um, there are, there are sort of like forum channels. So you can create a thread that I think that's really what killed the official forums is that this score just kind of gave us that and so much more. Uh, you have the official website for the game creators. So you can go there and check out. They have like a, a store. Where you can buy some uh, assets for either game guru classic, which is their previous software or game guru max be sure to make sh like when you're looking at those make sure it's compatible for whatever it is you're purchasing it for and there's some other information they have like a newsletter that they put out on a periodic basis and so on and then of course there's the live stream so the primary developer of game guru max does a monthly broadcast on the last saturday of every month so be sure to check that out as well. You can join the live broadcast and either just sit in and listen in into whatever's going on and some of the question and answer sessions that they do, or you can ask your own questions. And he's pretty open about uh, answering questions, you know, to the best of his ability. And lastly, on the hub, we have the workshop. Now, when I click this button, watch what happens. Click the button and it says it's currently checking my workshop items. And in a moment here, you're going to see a little bar that is going through and it's downloading all the workshop items and trying to basically just checking to see what I have, what I don't have. I don't know the inner workings of how this works. All I know is that it's really just kind of downloading everything and saying, okay, here's what you have. And uh, here's what the most up-to-date stuff is. From here, what you want to do is click this button and it's going to go through that process again and just download anything you may have been miss missing. Now, what I find it is super useful, is especially if you haven't done this in a long time or you just haven't done it at all, or you just want to make sure you have all the, the most up-to-date stuff, keep doing it. So see here, it says relaunch Game Guru Max and start the workshop 
items uh, refresh. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to pause the video, close it, reopen it, and we'll come back to this tab. And when I click on the workshop tab again, you can see there's nothing here. And I click on the button again, and it's all zero files. So I'm now up to date. So if you've never done that before, I'd highly encourage you to do that and uh, do it multiple times until you see all zeros. That's really what you're looking for. That way you know you have all the most recent up-to-date workshop items. Uh, but I think that's a good place to stop it here. It's a good high-level introduction of Max. The next time I do a video on this, what we're going to do is dive in a little bit deeper. So just as a preview, I'm going to open up the testing uh, project and show you the storyboard. We'll dive into how to move around like this and what all these boxes and how to wire them up and all these little buttons over here. We'll go through all that in the next video. If you enjoyed the video, if you learned anything new, please be sure to click the like button down below. That helps me out. Uh, welcome, by the way, if you are new here and this is, uh, you know, right where you want to be. If you haven't already done so, probably a good idea to subscribe to the channel. I am definitely the largest content creator when it comes to Game Guru Max, at least at this point. And you'll find a lot of useful videos here, like uh, these sort of uh, developer toolkit type videos or uh, behavior tutorial videos and so forth. That's the kind of content that I do. Uh, and don't forget to click the bell icon if you want a notification for whenever new videos are posted. I, I often say that I don't really keep a, a dedicated schedule. It's really just when I have a video available, I'll post it or I'll schedule it ahead of time if it's been you know, pretty recent but it's going to it's going to be hit or miss I, I it just depends on my personal schedule so if you want a notification bell icon your friend that'll help you out uh, but that's it for now uh thanks so much for watching all the way through and i'll see you in the next one bye for now hey don't forget there's a written guide for every behavior including ones i haven't yet uh, covered on this channel and if you want to learn some more why don't you check out this video next